In this video, let's go through how to show crossings in our drainage profiles. So often you may have another network crossing or some utilities crossing that you want to see in your profile view of your drainage network. There are two primary ways, there's, there's others, but two primary ways of viewing this, and that is as a feature line crossing and then adding uh, networks to the other profile. We'll cover the feature lines first. So let's say you have some line work that represents a water line or something that is crossing your network and you want to add it to your profile so you can see that conflict and make sure you design accordingly. Well, the first problem that we have is often in the field when uh, line locates are done or sur surveys are performed, all they have is paint on the ground. So you don't know how deep this is. So that's your first problem. You're going to have to assume a depth. Second problem is we need to be able to see it in our profile. We're going to handle that by using a feature line. So the first thing is let's change this polyline to a feature. So we're going to go feature line, feature line from objects, and we're going to choose this object and hit enter. I'm going to put it on a, whatever site that I'm using. I'm going to give it the name. And you can see here, I've got 10 inch water crossing created here. I'm going to change it to basic for the purposes of this demo. And we'll come back and change this style in a second so you can see how to set styles. One of the most important things is when creating a feature is that you want to assign these elevations. I'm going to hit OK. And now we're going to assign our elevations from our surface. And I'm going to put it relative three foot under. So whatever cover you want to assume for your utility, you can plug that in here and it will put that below the surface. So I'm going to hit OK and it created that feature. <clears throat> now that it's made, let's look at that style that I skimmed over. So I'm going to select the feature and I'm going to go to Feature Line Properties and here's our styles. I am going to create a new one for the purposes of this demo and I'm going to put Tutorial 10 inch, or let's say it's a 10 inch line. Uh, crossing. Now on all of your feature line styles you have profile section a display and a summary. Prof profile is pretty straightforward. That is what it's going to look like in a profile and more importantly for us is our section. Notice that feature line sections have crossing markers because feature lines are lines. They only have one thing. They can only cross a profile once in every instance so that's why they are called markers. This is where we're going to make our style within a style. So I'm going to create a new and let's put 10 crossing under my marker. Whoops. Tutorial crossing. How about that? Under my marker, I'm going to come over here and I want to leave it as a uh, blank and a circle. I always click on and back on because it gets a little um, hard for me to see which one is selected. So we want to do a circle with no center tick. Over here, since this is a 10 inch line, we're going to put this at 0.83. And um, we're going to do a fixed scale of 0 0.83. And my vertical exaggeration in my profiles is 10. So I'm going to put my Y exaggeration as 10. I'm going to come over to my display and I'm going to go to profiles and make sure that the marking or crossing lines is turned on in profile, which it is. I'm going to hit OK, hit OK, and OK again. Now that that's in there, we now have our feature line. We've got a style assigned to it. Let's add it to our profile view. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to choose profile view. And in this pull down right here, you're going, you may be tempted to click draw parts in profile view. That's parts. So that's for networks. Objects to profile view. This is project objects. That's not what we're wanting. We're wanting the crossing. Projection will project the entire object onto it. You'll see that in a little while. If I expand this under launch pad, you can add crossings. So I'm going to add crossings. It wants me to select the object. I'll select the object and I will hit enter. And here's our pop up. So, our waterline, our crossing marker, it didn't hold. So, I'm going to come down here to our tutorial crossing. 
uh, and I'm going to turn my labels off and we're going to use the objects elevation and I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that it put it in here. Now, caveat is you see the insertion point is the center. So if you typically that three foot down would be the crown, so you may need to adjust it depending on the diameter of your object whenever you are adding it in this way. But I'm not too worried about three to four inches when I'm worried about looking at crossings. Not in my case. If you're that tight, then you would want to adjust it. So that's the way you can add a crossing from a feature line. One would assume that adding network objects would be as simple as, it is, as that. And it is easy to add it. It's just harder to display it, in my opinion. So let's say that we have a sewer crossing. So I'm going to create a uh, new network. Let's call it SS Network. Set my styles and my parts. Let's do uh, sewer plan, sewer require plan manhole. Okay. Okay. And let's just plop in a couple of manholes here. And let's do an eight inch PVC. Check my surface oh, and, and plop a couple in here real fast. Let's just put one here and let's put one here. Okay. Let me delete these labels for the purposes of our video. So now we want to add this sewer crossing. Still should be between these two inlets. So you would think I could go in and just add it. And it, you can. So a few things that you need to keep in mind is to select this object. Things about networks is that the styles are assigned to parts. So if I come up here to the pipe properties, you'll see that that pipe property is assigned to this double. And the reason I said it's difficult is because this style is no longer has a uh, crossing feature section under sections. Under profiles and plans and all that good stuff, you see everything in that. You can't really adjust much when it comes to turning stuff on and off and the uh, markers. Under display, we're viewing in a profile, you have crossing pipes right here. But our default is our inside and outside pipes because we won't see in profile. So I'm going to leave this all alone real fast and I'm going to add it so you can see what happens. Now, when I select profile, when I select profile view, I can add parts to a profile. So I'll choose this part, hit enter, and choose this view, and now you can see it. So here they are projected onto the thing, and I didn't want all of them. I just wanted one, just wanted the pipe. Control Z that. Try that one more time. I want to select the view, draw parts and view. I'm going to do selected parts only, choose the pipe, hit enter choose view again and there you go so notice that it is projected it you see the entire pipe because it's not at a 90 you can see this angle I don't want to see the angle I can select it and I can change the property style here and turn off the inside and outside and only and pipe ends will only show the pipe crossing Problem is that if I had another display view over here, my pipes would have disappeared. So it's it's a bit difficult to get this when they're all in one drawing. Now, if you had multiple drawings, you were XREFing stuff in, it would work okay. But um, that's the quick and dirty of how to add crossings. And you can do it as many ways as you want, have as many styles as you want. You could just do an X if you weren't so worried about the diameters and stuff like that. But uh, hopefully that'll get you going on adding your crossings. If you have any comments, please leave it in the comments section. Please like and subscribe.